Tim with Online Big Blue will bring you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. How is everything going out there in Giants land? Kenny Galladay, coming to the Giants for a visit. It's been an interesting two days with Kenny. You, you, you had all the run amok rumors that the, he was signing with the Giants. He was going to sign before 4 o'clock, this and that and this and that. And I actually was talking to a subscriber and, and a new fellow YouTuber, Sfi. And I was trying to explain to him, I said, the Giants aren't going to sign anyone today. They're not going to sign anything directly for the cap when they need to be under the cap space. It's anything that happens is going to be the following day. And, well, that's what it looks like is going on. I mean, he's coming out to the Giants for a visit. There's plenty of riding on this visit. He, um, he's also got an offer from the Bengals, and it turns out that uh, Kenny's representatives are the ones that approach the Bengals about a potential deal. So he seems to be shopping his services. Um, and, that, and that's interesting. And it's interesting at this point in time in free agency that he is going out there and, and really soliciting other teams. So it's kind of just telling me that you know, the mutual interests are the interest for Kenny Galladay is, is not what the market was dictating. I get a little concerned when the two front runners are the Bengals and the Giants. I'm not saying anything wrong with Kenny, but why are there no other teams that are deficient at wide receiver making a move for a guy that's supposed to be the big guy on the market? And I find that I find that a little weird. Miami needs a guy. Miami's got space. I mean, is Kenny still? I don't think Kenny's going to get anywhere near the numbers that he wanted. And I think I think that's gone and out the door. Is is he going to get stuck with a one year deal? Can the Giants pull off? Can Dave Gellman actually do something right? and potentially pull off a one-year deal at like $12 million. Now, the cap space that we have is, 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 not, um, is, not, is not great. We barely have over $12 million, and that's not counting the Rule of 51, or that is counting the Rule. I mean, yeah, if you, take, if you subtract the Rule of 51, we have less. Um, Corey Davis got a three-year deal, of course, for 12 and a half for the Jets, and I, I got blasted the other day because I said, you know what, Kenny Galladay may have to get stuck with a 12-year, you know, a $12 million deal. So twelve and a half million a year, and, and because of the fact that that seems to be where the market's flushing out, I think Corey Davis, ha- I think Kenny Galladay has more of a potential big play ability than Corey Davis. But I think Corey Davis has proven more over time the ability to stay on the field and the willingness to go across the field, across the middle of the field. So I, I find that I find that interesting that. Like that said, poor Kenny's not, uh, poor Kenny's not getting the love. I don't, I don't, I don't get, I don't wait. That's what she said. Sorry. I had to throw that in there, but poor Kenny's not getting any love. I don't know what's going on here. It really doesn't. It's really kind of perplexing why this guy is not receiving the, and I know everyone's excited. I know everyone's excited and that he could potentially come here. And I do understand that potentially the strength of the, of the draft class is persuading teams from going out and spending big money on a wide receiver. Cause you figure you still got Kenny, you still got Juju, you still got Will Fuller. You still got Curtis Samuel, AJ green, man, AJ green goes to the Cardinals for what? $8 million. I, I'm not a big fan of taking a wide receiver. That's got a lot of, a lot of, a lot of usage like AJ green. And it has been dealing with some injuries. But a one-year deal for eight million dollars. I would have done that if I was the Giants. Yeah, he's not going to be the long-term solution, but it's freaking AJ Green. He's still he's still got some chops. I mean, I, I would definitely. I like I said, I would have definitely. If you would have told me AJ Green was going to take eight million for one year, I would have signed him. I wouldn't even thought twice about it. And honestly, you know, it's funny right now, if I'm looking the difference between, I was trying to examine this from a team perspective and an ability perspective. If I had my choice between Kenny Galladay and Curtis Samuel, I would probably go with Curtis Samuel. And everyone knows I'm not a Curtis Samuel fan, but if I had to choose between the two, I would probably go with Curtis because I think Curtis offers more in regards to usability on the team. 
I think he can be used in different spots. I think he has more of a career agility in reference to the fact to be playing different spots on the field. If the Giants don't overspend for Kenny Galladay, I would be extremely happy. If they gave him a one or two year deal. Now, and this is what people need to remember. Everyone's saying, well, we got a lot of money in 2021. No, even if you go look at the numbers, even if you look at the numbers for 2022, if you look at the numbers, even if the cap is projected at 209 or 208 million, we are already, we only have right now with Leonard Williams contract, 50, 50 something million dollars available and only 37 players under contract. Last time I checked, we have more than 37 players. So you're going to have to move a lot of money. Now, if you're, you can't do it again. You can't get Kenny on a lower deal at year one and then push out his, sal- his big salary into year two like they did to Leonard. Everyone's like, well, Leonard, Leonard, we don't like paying him 11. Yeah, but we're paying him like 28 the next year. You can't keep, and I keep saying this, you need to protect the cap. And this is what I get worried about with Dave Gellman. I don't think he understands that philosophy that you have to protect the cap. Yes, while deals look good, 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 I want to suck your blood. While deals look good up front because of the fact that you are not putting out a large amount of money, the back end of the deal is what you need to look at are year two. Like I said, at one point we had 80 something million dollars in 2022. And that was that projected cap of 209. And now at the Leonard deal, we have 50 and only 37 players signed. I, th- I think there's more than 37 players on an NFL roster. So you cannot keep pushing out contracts. That's sort of how we got in this trouble right now. We owe $30 million in bonuses this season alone to players. That's, that's a big, that's, that, and, and to mainly a, 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 like a group of five guys. But if Gettleman can pull off the, uh, I would say, if Gettleman could pull off the unimaginable and somehow link or sign Kenny Galladay to a manageable two- to three-year deal and he's not extending the money through the back end of the contract, it, could, it would be a steal for the Giants. I am concerned about the hip. I am concerned about the reports that he could have come back but chose not to because it was his free agent year. And I love when people say, wow, you would do the same thing. You're, you're, I, you know, what's funny. If I get hurt at work, or if I was working, I get hurt and I, I know there's a better job. I'm not going to stop going to work because I know I'm going to go to a better job later. I'm not going to stop going to work. You're still a professional. I don't know if the rumors are true. I'm just telling you what the rumors, you know, what the rumors have been. But like I said, if they can get them on, the, if they can get them on a good deal, I, why not take a shot at Kenny? You're gonna you're gonna wreck a lot of you're gonna wreck most of your cap space, unless he t- you know, unless he, you know, he takes like six million. But you're gonna wreck you're gonna wreck your cap space, and you're not you're not gonna have much else to you're not gonna be able to accomplish much else, and you're gonna have to hope that young guys progress and you can get through the draft. Speaking of giant players, what's going on with giant players bashing the team a little bit? You, you had Marcus Golden basically come out and said he almost retired after what was going on with the Giants. And he didn't understand why he wasn't playing. And he, he, didn't, uh, he just didn't get it. And he had such a bad experience in New York with this, or, you know, with this coaching staff that he almost left. He almost quit the NFL. Kevin Zeidler came out and said in his interview, it was on uh, Sirius XM NFL Radio, that he was happy to go to a franchise that, had, uh, that basically had some consistency and continuity and was going in the right direction. I mean, what's what's I, I get leery sometimes when multiple players and two is multiple start talking about the franchise and both have a a I would say a bad taste in their mouth from being in the franchise. And, and Kevin Zeiler even spoke about culture. He wanted to go to a winning culture. I mean, isn't that why we brought Joe Judge in? Isn't, wasn't he changing all that? I, I just find that I just get wor- I just get a little scared when you hear that. I mean, it probably you know, I'm not and and for Kevin Zeidler, I'm not saying it's sour grapes because of the fact that he actually went out and got more money, and maybe Marcus Golden was a little bitter because of the fact that we we didn't actually use him like we should have. Why he was not used in 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 the manner that he should have been used, 
I, I don't know. You know, that's, I mean, we don't know. We don't know what's going on in the meeting rooms. We don't know with anything else, but hopefully we'll get an answer on Kenny sometime today. I'm going to post this video early, but hopefully we'll get some kind of answer. Hopefully he's also not just using the team as a bargaining chip uh, for other teams. I, 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 you know, that's, and that's always the case. NFL players have been doing that for years, but hopefully that's not the case. And he has an actual interest with coming to play with the giants. And again, this is Tim with online big blue. We're bringing you the best of New York giant sports talk and entertainment. And as always, if you could like, you subscribe, if you ring that play thing, you know what that means. That'd be awesome.